When you think of Britain, what do you think of? Well, you probably think of something like this. Well, once upon a time, it was practically Scandinavia, and this is that story. Little side note, I'm probably going to be upgrading that intro. And there's an announcement at the end. Ah, early Scandinavian history. What do we know about it? Not that much. We know that Denmark was united in 930 by some guy named Gorm. We also know that in the north in Norway, some guy named Harald united the entire country because he wanted to marry someone and they didn't want him to since he was some sort of petty king or something like that. In Sweden, we don't really know anything other than that every king before Eric the Victorious was probably not real. But you guys aren't here for me to talk about Scandinavian history, you're here for me to talk about the Vikings and how they affected England. Well, unless you're here for me to talk about Scandinavian history. If that's the case, then just let me know what you want me to do with that. So you might be asking me, Alfonso, what and who were the Vikings? Well, the Vikings, as mentioned, were from Scandinavia, and I'll be using the terms Danish, Swedish, and Norse Norwegian to be talking about each of these groups. Despite what most people think, most Vikings were farmers and traders from Scandinavia. They primarily left the area because, you know, cold and they wanted to farm and trade and things like that. And Scandinavia wasn't really that loosely connected, considering cold, terrain, mountains, things like that. You see, geography affects things a lot. Anyway, around the year 793, some Vikings found out that there is this lovely place in England called a monastery, filled with these people who didn't exactly like their religion, and um, yeah, so the Vikings kind of showed up and burned the place to the ground, thus beginning in earnest the Viking Age. Now while these raids started out small, they eventually coalesced in a great army that conquered half of England, and set up an area called the Danelaw, which 50 years later kinda just collapsed. Side note, I'll probably do an episode talking about the Danelaw. Anyway, now we're at the year 1014, and England is led by a king called Aethelred the Unready. With a king with that kind of nickname, you know things are gonna get bad. So now we go over to Denmark, which is led by Svein Forkbeard, which is probably one of the most badass names I've ever heard. He was the son of a guy named Harald Bluetooth, which is also a really cool name. Yeah, all the Scandinavian kings and vikings had really cool names. I mean, there was a guy named Eric Bloodaxe. Tell me that does not scream metal. So at this point, Svein is king of Denmark and Norway. Yeah, Norway kind of got the short end of the stick when it comes to the Scandinavian Three. I mean, literally, Norway spent a majority of its history being dominated by Denmark and Sweden, and even partially still, considering that the first king of an independent Norway was the second son of the Danish king. But that's besides the point. So Svein goes over, curb stomps the English, installs himself as king, and begins his almighty reign over England, Denmark, and Norway. And his reign would last an incredibly long time, and in that reign, he would do great things for his people. He ruled for five weeks and then straight up died. So, what happens next? Well, in Germanic society, because yes, technically Scandinavians are Germanic, the father gives to his eldest son what he himself inherited from his father, and whatever else he gained in life he gives to his other sons. So in this case, Denmark went to his eldest son Harald. Yes, they're all named Harald, I swear to god. Norway got its independence for about five seconds, and his second son, Canute, was supposed to get England, except Aethelred came back and became king of England again. So Canute, faced with the prospects of war, bravely ran away back to Denmark. Don't worry, he's coming. So Aethelred resumes his reign. It doesn't last that much longer. So his son Eadmund Ironside takes over, and no one likes him. 
mainly due to the fact that when his father was still alive, Edmund was a bit of a rebel. So, Canute shows up with the boys off the coast of England and lands, and it pretty much goes like this. Oh, hey, Canute, I, I see you're back. Yeah, I'm here to claim my inheritance. Uh, well, why don't you just walk this way? Our current king kind of sucks and you're the best alternative. Well, thank you, friend. Now, where's the current king so I can lob his head off? Edmund died before Canute could get his hands on him, and look at that! Canute is now king of England! He's got his inheritance. But, tragedy strikes. His older brother, Harald the Sixty Billionth, has died. And now Canute's king of Denmark! So this continues on for about a good ten years, and people actually seem to like Canute. I mean, he's remembered as Canute the Great for a reason. So you know how I said that Norway was independent? Well, that didn't last that much longer. You see, in 1028, ten years into Canute's rule over both England and Denmark, he showed up off the coast of Norway with some ships, and it went a little bit something like this. Uh, I want to be your king. Um, um, you guys have weapons, uh, we really don't, we're kind of dealing with a bunch of crap right now, so... Yeah, sure, you could take over. Okay. And so Canute became king of Norway too, establishing the North Sea Empire, which lasted not as long as you might think it did, but it was still impressive. Canute was king of England, Denmark, and Norway. So this gig lasts for about seven years, and then Canute dies. So, what happens after Canute dies? England went to his son Harald. As if this family tree wasn't confusing enough. Denmark went to his second son, either called Canute or Hartha Canute. It kind of doesn't matter. And uh, Norway, you know how I said Norway occasionally gets his independence? Well, it did. Going to Magnus the Great. Lesson of the story, don't split your inheritance. Hey guys, Alfonso here, and I would just like to announce the new Discord server dedicated to history, language, and politics. And it's for this channel mainly, but my other channels will probably be covered there. And uh, I have a Patreon. No one's going to be pledging to it as I am ridiculously small, but I thought I'd set it up anyway. Cheers!